What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two co-hosts and two best friends, Mike Bonnie and Mikey LaPlante. What's Hello. going on, dudes? Don't ever call me that again. I like that <laughs> new name. You get. I like your new How's voice. Your guys... Thank you. <laughs> How's your guy? How was your guys' week? Exciting. It was good. All right, I'm yeah, going to just stop. If I wanted a <laughs> robot, I would have gone to the store. <laughs> um, you can buy a robot at the, into the bye weeks, guys. I'm sure you can. Stop <laughs> interrupting me before I toss you guys off. You don't have the authority. <laughs> and then we got two teams out of bye weeks this week. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. It kind of sucks, though, especially with this being such an important week of the fantasy yeah. season. And it's just weird. Yeah, especially after a week with no bye weeks. Yeah, it's just wild. And there was, to keep it wild, there was no Thursday night game. So there's no Thursday night recap. We got to go. Blame over the Ravens. Blame COVID, Fucking man. COVID. Tearing shit up. Yeah, it's horrible. So what do you guys say? We just jump into some game for you. Yes, sir. Cool that? Let's get to it. All right. First game here in New Orleans Saints at the Atlanta Falcons. Guys, Taysom Hill is going to be his third start, and he's had uh, – first game he was pretty good running and throwing last week. Not so much throwing the ball, but he uh, got – he ran in the <laughs> – ran the ball in the end zone twice for two rushing touchdowns. But uh, how do you guys feel about him – Moving forward. Uh, not great. I, oh, you can go with that, my bad. <laughs> not great. I mean, he's got a great matchup in the Atlanta Falcons, but Taysom Hill just ain't really thrown it too well. And the only thing that he's offering right now is rushing value. I just don't trust enough to be starting him. Exactly. Like, if you're in a 10-team league, like, why? Yeah, I, I feel you. There really isn't no. And the, with to. with Sean Payton, I mean, I mean, he's smart. He's not going to design a game plan around a guy who's not an avid thrower like Drew Brees. He's going to design a more run heavy game for a Taysom Hill quarterback. Definitely, and he, these two teams obviously uh, they just played each other two weeks ago at Taysom Hill's first start. He finished with twenty four fantasy points. He was eighteen and twenty three for two hundred thirty three yards throwing. Yeah, I believe most of that was to Michael Thomas. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed to lock on. Um, Ike, I asked you last week on the show about Alvin Kamara because you're the owner here. Are you freaking out yet or no? Yeah, pretty much considering this whole year, he was the number <laughs> one running back averaging, what, nearly like 25, 30 points a game. And now as soon as Taysom Hill comes in, he's plummeted, at like legit plummeted to under 10 fantasy points in back-to-back -back games, it's a disaster. It's funny how this scenario of Taysom Hill starting has now bumped him out of that running back one position when the scenario <laughs> of Barkley and McCaffrey going down in the beginning of the season is the whole reason he was the number one running back. It's weird Pretty how much. that works. Kamara was having a really good fantasy Thanks. season, too. Like, even with McCaffrey and Barkley still around, he still would have been up there. I don't know about number one, though. Uh, yeah, I'd still say, well, and yeah. Elvin Cook, but it, yeah, I agree with you. Like, it's just, I don't know, his That's touches are down, Murray. just all in general. I wonder, I wonder they're if they're using just, the They're saving Murray him for the playoffs, because there is the foot That's injury that that's been bugging like. him. So, I mean, they don't want, if they go to playoffs without Kamara, yeah, it's going to be rough, as long as they use him, I would assume. The player you're talking about, Murray, is he uh, – are you okay starting? Uh, with Taysom Hill, I mean, yeah, he's – I kind of look at him as the poor man Kareem Hunt to, in this offense because, like you guys just said, they are resting Alvin Kamara. He's, I mean, he only played on 31 snaps last week. I mean, out of a possible 61. Like, that's just unlike Kamara. Kamara's always out on the field. Murray was out there for 30 snaps. Yeah. They're just using him more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had 19 it's, carries last I, week compared to Kamara. I don't, how come Levin they've never think? given Kamara, like, 20 carries? He, he, may, he, might, not, be. he might not be it, able to do get, it. No, it's not. Yeah, he gets But he, get, he does 
uh, let's say a normal workload he gets banged for him up now, like, is he doesn't have about to 10 to 12 him. carries and eight catches, which is about 20 touches. So I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess that's too much. You just want you just want to not, not use him in the pass game, then? Is that what you're saying? Like you just want him to get 20? Carries? I'd like to see where he can do it. 20 carries, that's for sure. I think you're more likely to get 20 yeah. uh, targets than 20 carries and have Kamara shoes. I agree. <laughs> I just think he would break down too much if they were to do that. And, and I would like to see opinion. what he can do, though. I feel, uh, I feel like he can at least run over 100 sure. yards, you'd assume. I really only see this value with Murray with yeah. Taysom Hill starting, though. Like, like I said, I think Agreed. it's just more a run-heavy game plan that Sean Payton's going for because Taysom Hill knows he's not as accurate as Drew Brees. He's not going to risk those throws. Oh. I'm curious to see when Brees is healthy how much Taysom Hill plays. I wonder if they go back to how it was, or uh, maybe I, gonna take over. Yeah, maybe gets a little bit more offense. snap percentage. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, but uh, jumping over to the pass catchers, Michael Thomas, Manny Sanders, Trey Con Smith. I say it every week, Manny Sanders. You're obviously yeah. starting Thomas. Well, Mike Thomas. Yeah, yeah, he's obviously a must start, and like Laplante said earlier, that he locks on to, uh, or Taysom Hill's locked on to. Michael yeah, he's Thomas. always the he's first one starts. he's looking at. He's got it. At 18 targets in the past two games with Hill's quarterback. So. Yeah, but other than that, I'd I'd be sitting Emmanuel Sanders or Trey Con Smith until Drew Brees comes back. Yeah, yeah Jared him next. I, He's boomer bust at this point, and I mean by that it's touchdown dependent. Boomer bust, yeah, for sure. He's touchdown dependent at this point because he he got all the the underneath work like Camaro did with Drew Brees in the offense, and they're not Taysom Hill's not doing the underneath work. Do I really got to tell you guys his last three? I already days, looked at him. <laughs> Sorry, I could go. If, I could go last four. Three points, zero points. All right, point, you couldn't even get ten total points. points out of four weeks. That's a definite set. Unfortunately for the position, yeah, you have to look he, at matchup, and the, he has a good one. This this week, guys, though, with this being a huge week, if you're battling, that would the playoffs, I'd be so you scared. Can't start him. <laughs> you can't. No, do it. not anymore. Um, but. We've already taken too long at the Saints. So jumping over to the Falcons, Matt Ryan, guys, with Julio Jones banged up. Uh, Calvin Ridley's also on the injury report. Is he a stay away with this rising? I put him uh, on the sit article, actually. Of course you did. You always got to put my players on the sit article and just bum me out. (laughs) No, Matt Ryan, not Calvin Ridley. Oh, I mean, yeah. That makes sense. Matt Ryan, I mean, Julio Jones, his hamstring's questionable. I He's going to be a game-time decision, and we all know that what Matt Ryan is without Julio Jones. The Saints defense is insane right now. I yeah. As good as yep. defenses are, I never trust defenses that aren't at home. It is in the, it's in Atlanta, so, I mean, things could go haywire for a defense. If there are fans, I'd agree with you. Just uh, It just, it, who knows, nowadays with COVID and all that. It's a toss-up. And then jump it to – but uh, are you guys okay starting Julio if he's active? Because when he got hurt, it, obviously, when he, if he tweaks it again, he it I'd wait a week. ruin your week. But then on the second thought, if you don't have him in your lineup and he blows up, then you're yeah, kicking yourself in the ass. Be willing to make that when decision. They, when they play two weeks and live ago, with it. he only had two catches for 39 yards. I just – it's hard to say because it is it's it's Julio Jones. Did you yeah. say the last? He got time two targets, played? two catches, thirty nine yards. That, that was that's that the game that he got hurt. He got hurt. Oh, okay, because yes. uh, yeah, yep. if that happens again, I don't trust anyone on this offense really. Then, um, jump it over to the backfield though. Ha, uh, if Ty Gurley doesn't play again, which he's obviously hampered by the knee, that's. Always bothering him. Brian Hill disappointed last week. Are you 13, 13 carries, right. 55 yards? I guess that's not horrible, but you yep. guys are this definitely staying away. Not to be messed with right now. Yeah, they Especially don't. Especially rushing the ball. Well, it, it, the, the thing with this mm-hmm. is they don't even allow 100 yard rushers, and Todd Gurley's thing is he's getting volume in this offense, and that volume's not even going to equate to 100 yards. So you're hoping for a touchdown, and right. it's just too boom definitely. or bust. Especially in this thirteen uh, week thirteen fantasy playoff push, and that Ito Smith has uh, seems like he has a role in the offense too. If 
Todd Gurley's out. So Brian Hill doesn't even have the full workload. Smith had. I'd 12, like Edo uh, more than Brian Hill. Yeah, yards. Edo definitely. And and five and five targets. So and just watch out. Just. I think I would actually lean towards Edo Smith too. And if you would ask me that last yep. week, I would have leaned. No, I just there. I think Edo's. It's just but, a higher floor. He's more involved in the pass game than Brian Hill is. Uh, Agreed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Hayden Hurst, guys, he's questionable as well with an ankle. The way tight end is, he makes me mad. Start him if he's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, jump to the next game. Detroit Lions at the Chicago Bears. What a poop game this is, guys. Matthew Stafford not going to have his weapons. Kenny, Kenny Galladay, shocker. Jesus. Didn't practice all week. He's out again. Um, they also cut Marvin Hall today. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, good question. Yeah, it, <laughs> they literally just cut him. All right. So uh, I think we're all in agreement here. Stafford's yes. stay away in this game. Along with everybody in this game except for TJ Hawkinson. I kind of like DeAndre Swift. He's he's limited. He's going to be limited. If, if he, I would not be putting him in. I'm just saying, if if he plays, I see the Lions being down and he's going to get the PPR work. I honestly think something might be wrong with him. Did you see what no. Adrian Peterson said? He said that ever since DeAndre Swift's concussion, he hasn't been acting like the same person. That's hopefully it's not, scary. Man, hopefully it's not the job at best situation That's hor- again. That, what he said, that, yeah, what, yeah, what he said that, that like... Just made me sad, to be honest. Because you know that obviously that. something weird happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but if Swift is Swift, ugh, with Swift out, if he's out, Adrian Peterson, Adrian or Peterson. Carry on Johnson, because they both got work. They both got. I would work say carry on. Given carry on more so in the past. Carry on, passing game. I like. Lo- Adrian Peterson yeah. has just touched down dependent LaPlante. So I think that's why I would roll with carry on. Because Peterson, I don't have – do you have a stat? For the red zone. Peterson last week. I know he got in the end he, zone twice. I just don't know what his stat line looked he like. He had, I believe, 20 carries. 15 for 55. 15, that's what it was. 20, yeah. 27% of the snaps, carry on. Was out there way more, so I, man. Yeah, but that that was uh, as a negative game script, which you don't really know. Yeah, especially with the fire and Matt Patricia. I mean, it could be a a totally different offensive scheme. Mm -hmm. Um, Marvin Jones, I'd say flex. Yeah, I'm not even comfortable with that. I mean, if you have to, he's flex. That's it. Just because of this matchup, and he's okay. playing poopy with yeah. Kenny Galladay. And then Hawkins, yep. top five tight end. So, it, even in this kind of tougher matchup against the Bears. But uh, jump it over to those Bears. Mitch Trubisky, Ike, the floor is yours. Uh, I think you guys should start him this week because he is the Detroit Lion killer, obviously. Are, are you confident <laughs> yes, in him, though? Because he's technically oh, yeah. the, he's the Matt Patricia Detroit Lion killer. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think uh, the new coach no. is going to nope. throw a little zone at him <laughs> this game? Or no, no, they're going to keep playing man-to-man. I have full confidence in him. For some reason, the, uh, maybe Detroit did something to him, like, emotionally or something, but the dude just balls out against them for no reason, so... Because it's strictly man to man. Mitch can die. It's Mitch can diagnose that. He can see that. At least he's got one thing going for him. <laughs> it's when some. It's when somebody drops into his own. That's a. I don't know. Do you I don't know. Uh, uh, anything to add? Play? Not on Mitch, but I'm going to say start David Montgomery. <sighs> of course you are. Yeah, the and he's off of a hot week. A if the Bears don't decide to use him, they're not smart. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that'd be Mark classic Chicago Bears, man. So don't expect him to be used week. often. It would be. I mean, expect the Cordero Patterson game. He he ripped I, off that fifty-seven yard run right away in that beginning of the Packer game. Like, how do you not go back to him? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you see Cordero Patterson, don't be shocked. Oh, I, we'll see him returning kicks. Are you guys? Are you guys more comfortable with Allen Robinson with Mitch at quarterback now? 
13 targets last week, guys. That was the most since uh, week three. When they had Mitch, Atlanta. weird. Uh, sorry, I lied. Week five, sorry, oh, week five matter. when they played Tampa, he had 16 targets. It's, either way, he's getting the targets. It's a yes and a no. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And, well, D- Darnell Mooney's banged up, too, so he... Robinson could really see the bulk of the targets even more. So. Uh, yeah, it's either that or Mitch might decide to drop it off to David Montgomery. He's not afraid to. Ju- I, he's actually been showing that he's checking it down more recently. I mean, my, what does Montgomery have? Like uh, five catches, I believe, in last week. Yeah, five catches on yeah, six targets. So. Like he's I mean, he's getting involved in the passing game too. Yeah, a lot of lot of gar a lot of garbage time, and like I said, we don't really know That's what the fair. script's gonna look like in this game because both teams. I'll tell teams you, one person players. not starting is Anthony Miller. Um, like, yeah, he's obviously a sit, and like I said, Darnell Mooney is questionable. He's banged up, so uh, guys, oh, I don't man, think you guys aren't gonna start Anthony starting Miller, my hero. Place. And then you're not starting Gene Green either. He's kind of. I got uh, here eight hours ago. Darnell Mooney questionable, but should play. Okay. Okay. You're not starting him. No, I'll be up to you guys. I'm not starting him. No. But jumping over the next game, Cleveland Browns at Tennessee Titans. Baker Mayfield. Finally, they caught some good weather last week in Jacksonville, and he balled out a little bit. He has 19 to 29 for 258 and two touchdowns. That's the second most yards he threw. I want you to repeat season. that. How guys, many yards uh, is that? We'll start. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> we're starting Baker yards. Mayfield. He had a great matchup Not even last in this week. Good matchup, huh? I, I, I mean, and yeah, he's got. I mean, that's that's okay. not a great matchup, but he just threw the most yards he had all year. And Nick Chubb went off in that game. Like yeah. they didn't even need to throw it. I don't know why they did. <laughs> Can we come to an agreement that Kevin Stefanski, I think, is a really good head coach? I feel like he knows exactly what to do with or exact. He knows exactly like, what to do with Nick Chubb, the, the complete, <laughs> the complete game manager, and they, like Baker could be the ultimate game manager and just feed those two running backs. You know what I mean? That's I think Stefanski's I doing good enough to almost be coach of the year. He won't get it, but. He's in the running. I mean, it's hard not mm-hmm. to consider him. Look what he's doing with the Browns. I mean, when was the last time you've seen the Browns with this record? Definitely. I mean, it's probably Brian I was going to say Mike Tomlin. I think it's guaranteed winning. him if they stay this way. Yeah. Ugh. But, yeah. I, can see I like Sean McDermott, too. Uh, what do you guys feel about – how do you feel about the backfield in this I, offense? I love Nick Chubb. Yeah, Nick Chubb's really good. <laughs> yeah, our – yeah. Top five. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Cream Hunt's a little worrisome. Cool. Yeah, how you feeling about him? Like he's struggling a little uh, bit. I, you're weeks. still gonna put him in your lineup just because the running backs aren't really great this year. But probably low mm-hmm. like pretty low end RB two or flex. Yeah. Back to back weeks with uh under ten fantasy points. He actually put he yeah, he's just not getting any of the catches. Yards last week, so uh, that was, he, yep, that was real efficient. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he's just not getting. Yeah, he's he's honestly not been on touches. the field a whole lot either. It. I mean, uh, he's only got twenty eight snaps last week compared to Nick Chubb's forty one, mm-hmm. and last week he had twenty six. Like this, he's going through a rough stretch where he's just not really even out on the field. But jumping into the pass catchers in this offense, guys, Jarvis Landry. Balled out last week, seeing 11 targets and 28 fantasy points. You guys comfortable starting him the rest of the season or just in good matchups? Yeah, I'd have to check the matchups. Yeah, it's mainly matchup dependent. This one's got a, a decent chance of going uh, high scoring, and if it's going high scoring, they're going to have to throw the ball, and he's the number one guy. That's the reason he's getting those targets. Most definitely. Most definitely. I see him as, like, yep. a wide receiver three. Yeah, wide like receiver that. two Nothing on a, a good that. matchup, maybe. Sure. Uh, Rashard Higgins? Yeah. Anything on him or and Isaiah Hodge? Hodge or something it, like that. You have it? Yeah. Hodge. I, this, this isn't a very pass-heavy offense. Yeah, great. Hard <laughs> I don't. I don't really trust anybody yeah, as a pass catcher besides, guys. yeah, besides Hooper and I'm Landry. I'm cool with Hooper. 
I'm, he's a, Hooper's the number one red yeah. zone threat besides the running backs in this offense. I see. I feel like he sees a lot of the red zone targets. And Baker, the last two games, I know I've seen Baker miss him on two throws where he hit him on one of them last week. The he missed. I, yeah, and he completely. Did you guys see the throw? No, I missed that one. Whiffed him yeah, the, whiffed on him up the seam. Oh my god, it was horrible. Completely wide open, and Baker just missed it. No pressure, no nothing. It yeah, it's horrible. crazy. He's gone from like tight but, uh, end top five last year to basically nothing. Yeah, he completely switched styles of offense mm-hmm. as he's in. The yeah. Falcons threw it so much, and this offense just doesn't throw it that much. <laughs> Jump into the Titans, guys. Man, it's Derek. You're just going to skip right over Tannehill December, season, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to let everyone know it's Derek Henry season. Now we can talk about Ryan Tannehill. LaPlante, this is kind of a, a prime streaming matchup for him. You cool uh, starting him? Is he uh Yeah, if you, uh, if you got a bad matchup, week? I think he's definitely worth a streaming value. I mean, the Browns' secondary is atrocious. They always seem to get in shootouts. Everyone's banged up on that offense too. Like I seen, they were missing like yeah, five starters on the defense. It's last insane. Week. Like the defense for the the run defense for the Browns is really good. They don't really allow that many yards on the ground, but through the air, they just allow so much. Because they got nobody yep. at cornerback yep. except for Denzel Ward. Whatever happened to Greedy Williams? Mm-hmm. He flaked like most Not top sure. ten cornerbacks do. <laughs> uh, but we already touched on Derrick Henry, absolute stud, probably quarterback mm-hmm. or running back one. Yeah, if he can, if he, if he can do what he did uh, against the Colts the defense, play. I Go think ahead. he can do that against any defense. Yep. And then the pass catchers in this offense. If if you're gonna get scared off of Tannehill this week, it might be because of this. AJ, he's gonna be playing. Is questionable, having hip problems. Okay. Okay. Adam Humphreys, also questionable with a concussion. Corey Davis will still be there, and he's been a solid. I, I love Corey Davis here. if A.J. Brown doesn't um, play by so, chance. So he'll... Mm-hmm. Yeah, but absolutely. I still wide receiver I would, three. I would actually... With A.J. Brown there, but if, if A.J. Brown's down... Yeah, I would Corey say Davis that. Yes, absolutely. Wide receiver one, I feel. And then uh, Jadu Smith actually got ruled out. Um, tonight as well. Anthony Ferkser. And so it's going to be the Anthony Ferkser, sure. And how did he do? He yeah, did he was actually not the bad. last time Jadis Smith went out, right? Risky. So uh, I did not throw him in the tight end streaming article, but if I were to do it now, I definitely would. But yeah, when Jadis went out last time, he caught 8 of 9 targets for 130. I just don't trust it. It's only happened once. So. That's the only thing. But it, sure. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Definite small sample size. I feel you. Um, jumping over the next game, Cincinnati Bengals at the Miami Dolphins. Can I? Just, well, no, I can't really skip over it. Brandon don't Allen. Start. Nothing, obviously. How do you guys feel about? Nope. G- I don't. I don't want to start G- anyone this week on this right? offense. Um. No. No. T- not even. Tyler I don't like Boyd. Oh, Tyler Tyler Boyd. I don't like AJ Green. Uh, I honestly, T. Higgins is going to get Xavier Howard. It is so real tough Tyler Boyd is going to get pretty Byron Jones. Be washed. <laughs> AJ more Green's than gonna... likely Tyler Boyd's going to get Byron Jones, but it's not for certain. If if I had to pick somebody, it's probably Giovanni Bernard. I don't know why, but I just see Brandon Allen checking the ball down a lot, and he's going to get cheap, easy points. Does Xavier not play the slot, Ike? No, for usually it's Byron Jones. I thought he did. Yeah, Xavier has actually been the one shadowing okay. uh, all the number one receivers. Like he was the one that shadowed Hopkins when uh, he, mm-hmm. Hopkins had that bad game against them. Okay, okay, but yeah, I think we can just jump to the Dolphins. Uh, Tua is questionable with a thumb injury. And but it's not to be honest, Flores right? isn't tipping his hat to either one. Yeah, be Fitzpatrick probably. Uh, if if you're gonna be safe with it, I'd go Fitzy, because I don't think they're gonna play Tua if he's hurt. And then if that happens, Fitzy's probably shoots right up there to be a streamer this week. Yeah. It's an awesome matchup, right? 
Um, the only bad thing is, is they could blow him out pretty quick, and then it'll be the that's I don't know Patrick that's, Laird show. DeAndre. That's why I'm, I'm leaning. Miles Gaskin's gonna be back. Oh, the, yeah, you're right. You're right. Like that's my fault. Yeah, uh, Gaskin's there. Gaskin will be back. So I pay attention yeah, to Gaskin because he said your... he's supposed to be activated Saturday. It's, back too. it's it's a could be. It's not a he is type of situation. I feel like it's gonna be like the Eckler yeah, thing. I'm looking at the. I'm looking where at he'll the end up thing. playing. Then jump it over to the pass catchers in this offense. Devontae Parker. I sure as hell like him a lot better th- with Fitz than I do with I like Tua. him either way in this offense. Devontae Parker is the clear number one guy in this offense with Tua or Fitzy at, at the helm. I feel confident with him either way. Yeah, ain't, uh, ain't, yeah, not denying that. Yeah, 18 fantasy points, 19 fantasy points his last two games, so he's definitely a confident start. Can't really say the same about Maybe, anybody, any other pass yeah. in this offense. But but Gasicki he's has trending towards consistency. A couple, um, couple decent weeks in a row, yeah. Yep. Uh, five targets the last three. I actually like five it. See, if you want to tell me about who, who's going to be the favorite target, if Fitzy's the quarterback or two is the quarterback, I like Jacecki if Fitzy's the quarterback. I don't know why. Yeah, Jacecki, Jacecki, doesn't matter. I like him with Fitzy. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Okay, fair Let's enough. Let's talk about like this next game because this one looks like a fun one. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars at the Minnesota Vikings. Mike Glennon. Mike, Mike Slinky Neck Mike Glennon. used to be a Chicago Bear. Obviously, Glennon. you're not starting him. Yes, it was. <laughs> Think he started two games? Three? Please. Uh, let's talk about somebody more. Yes, I, offense, James I like him. I like him this week. <laughs> we me. all like him. I don't. He's match- I think he's matchup he matchup proof? proof. I mean, if he goes against the Ravens or the Steelers, I would be hesitant to, hesitant yeah, to start him. But you're still starting him, I think. Yeah, he's got the volume you love for a, a RB one. It's just there's weeks he's RB2. just not yeah. that efficient. No volume of an RB one. He's getting the pass catching back and he's pass catching role and he's getting the in between the tackles. He's only had under twenty touches twice. <laughs> and this is an undrafted for, uh, crazy. rookie. Like especially he's he's got it. I don't know what it is, yep. but he has it. And I I just he's yeah, he's he, inefficient he's sometimes awesome. in poor matchups. That's my only knock on him. <laughs> You know who hasn't been awesome? Pretty much everybody else on this offense. My guy, uh, DJ Chark. He's been bang. He's been banged up. He's he, been inconsistent. He's in the doghouse. He's. Uh, oh, he's sitting on the bench up, with Drew Brees. With you those can sit him on ribs. your bench, guys. <laughs> uh, but with Chark banged up, and there's no guarantee he's playing this week. Uh, uh, I like Lavisca. How do you feel about the other pass catchers? I, I don't like him a lot, though. I don't, I don't like any of them enough to start them. Mm-hmm. I, I would I'm going on a limb and say LaVisca and a flex, but that'd be it. The main guy you want from this is uh, James Robinson and, mm-hmm. and DJ Chark if he plays. And then the, the weird thing we saw last week, and I know I've mentioned about it on the podcast, when the backup quarterback comes in, he likes to target guys who – he practices with with like the second and third team, obviously. And Colin Jackson, yeah, no, I, the long touchdown, the guy who, yes, he led the team in targets last. Yeah, week, right? I, I was gonna put him in this, and then I just didn't. Like I said before, it's only one game. I th- mm-hmm. I like I him if Chris Conley doesn't play. With He's questionable with the hip. You if know. you don't play, that means Colin Johnson's gonna get more snaps, like he did last week. Well, Conley, Conley played last week, and he did Yes. Play. You mean, and you're assuming Chark plays? Okay. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. He's just something to watch, I guess. Maybe throw him in a DFS feeling lineup if you're frisky. feeling frisky. 
But jumping over to the Vikings, Kirk Cousins, how you guys feel about him being in the, uh, as a streamer? I feel good really about it. Just saw, you guys are going to uh, hate me, but I say trap game. Last week. I think it's a trap. It's a trap. Dalvin Cook, even though he's injured, he's going to come out here and probably run for another 200 yards. No. No, no, whoa, so? no. No. I think they're going to cut down on his carries, unfortunately. How do you cut too. down on your carries Kinda if they're like pushing for a playoff? Well, if they're pushing I'll for a pull, playoff on, I'll with pull his back new seventh on that a little you know, bit. seed, yeah. I mean, they they can make it. I, 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 I. I don't necessarily think they'll need to use him in a workhorse role to win this game because I what feel like the he's going to be so used much better than Jacksonville. The offense still. is better than Jacksonville. The defense ain't that great. Agreed. No, better than Jacksonville, though. <laughs> but I do like all the pass catchers in this offense. So I like Adam Thielen, obviously, Justin Jefferson. Those guys are both wide receiver twos. Adam Thielen, borderline wide receiver one. And then I like Kyle Rudolph. Yeah, I, if Smith I only play. like Kyle Rudolph if Irv Smith doesn't, you guys doesn't play. Because otherwise, these guys are splitting sh- uh, snaps. It's just Kyle Rudolph will have majority of the playing time if Irv Smith's out. <laughs> and then he's probably going to get a cheap touchdown. Yeah, Rudolph saw eight targets last week with uh, Smith out, and that was uh, almost yeah. They usually than any other game when they're both playing, they're usually each had. getting four targets it's apiece. Crazy. It's just because this offense doesn't pass that much unless it has to. And even if they sure. do, it's the Dalvin yep. Cook. Bingo. <laughs> Jumping over to the next game: Las Vegas Raiders at the New York Jets. Derek Carr, <laughs> complete and utter disappointment for fantasy owners last week. For people who tried to tr- um, people who tried to stream him, and I was one of those people last Yikes. week. One fantasy point last week, guys. One point six in that great matchup against Atlanta. He's got another great matchup here, and his running back is banged up. Uh, Can you go? Josh back Jacobs to was ruled him? out earlier today. Uh, and Devontae Booker is going to get the start. What I, a nightmare. <sighs> I don't. I, I want to trust Derek Carr, but it's hard to trust him for fantasy value because he's just an NFL quarterback that's doing really good this year. Not fantasy relevant, but doing good for his team. Whether that, yeah, whether that be che- mm-hmm. uh, checking down from a pass all- play to a run play in the red zone. He he don't care if he scores or not. He just wants to win. Uh, no. Anything to add, Ike? <laughs> I kind of. How do you guys feel about Deva- Devonta Booker? I kind of like him. Border- this You're Jets starring him in all leagues one. for sure. Yeah, I mean this Jets run defense is definitely tougher than people get him cre- give him credit for, but they run the ball a lot. And it... He's yeah. probably yeah. Get, yeah I I probably just don't be surprised if he uh, gets the Josh Jacobs role and Jalen Richard still retains the passing value though. Is Richard playing? I know uh, he's been banged up yeah. down with injuries. Talk about Waller. Uh, but what, while or, you or Ruggs, or plan, any, any got, other pass catcher in this yeah, offense. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, Ike, how do you feel about the pass catchers? It's encouraging. Five targets last Still week. Still not worth starting. Since uh, week one. And he was inches away from ke- uh, getting into the end zone on one of the longer catches. I don't like I starting don't any of the wide player. receivers. Kind of a sick catch. With confidence, at least. Yeah, especially with the news that Jalen Richard is playing Agreed. in this game. No, I don't know. I think if any, but I don't honestly, know. that doesn't affect the pass catch. Hunter Renfro, I, I kind of like this week if I had to name one. Yeah, he saw nine targets yeah. last week, but before that, he just has he been getting the ball. Yep. Three tar- I, four targets, three targets, two, two. It's just they're not. If like they do, the it's to Darren Waller, the baller. If I was going to bet on one guy to have that uh, big play, yep. like yeah. Nelson Aguilar's been having the past couple weeks, it's probably going to be Henry Ruggs, though. Yeah. Pierre Desir, such a bad cornerback for the Jets, and he guards the perimeter uh, wide receivers. And, well, let me tell you, Henry Ruggs is a perimeter wide receiver. He's fast. It's a good chance. He, he's a good DFS throw. He's cheap. Him. 
Are you comfortable? Uh, I'm probably pretty comfortable starting Nelson Aguilar out of any of these guys. 20 fantasy points. The only thing that tempers me from Aguilar, games, is, Aguilar is his matchup. ankle. He was a little banged up, and he, he just doesn't play the same when he's injured. That's fair. That's fair. Um, jumping over the Jets. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, we did we talk, talk about, about Waller? We're starting him. Go, go on. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Frank Gore, really the only back in uh, this offense right now. He saw 18 carries last week, 21 touches. Um, it's a good matchup against the Raiders. How do you? How, I know it's not sexy. No, it's gross. But if you need a guy to score you eight points, you could probably plug him in your lineup. This is the only game. week I will ever advocate for Frank Gore. This is, I mean, you can move the uh, offense on the Raiders' defense. They're not great. They give up yards. And what does Frank Gore do best? If they're in the red zone, they use him and he gets touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised if he, this is a multiple touchdown game for him. Go ahead, Ike. Don't trust enough to start him. I, I, don't, I don't trust it, but I wouldn't be surprised. Hey, you also can't even trust James Crowder in this offense anymore either. Ever since he came back from his injury, he's seen two targets, four targets, five targets. Has a caught I one just three don't know how you can feel confident going into the yards. Week 13 matchup to try and get in the playoffs or clinch a playoff spot with anybody on the Jets team. <laughs> like, I'd be like, uh, no. I mean, if you're looking <laughs> for a boomer bus player, Bashard Perryman is the definition of it. But you ri- – yeah. I'm just going to bite my tongue here. I mean, I'm not trusting it. I'm just saying if you're looking for points, well, I'm, he's like a well, Nicole Hardman. For the biggest week of the regular season, you, and you're going to try and do a boomer bust with Brashad Perryman on the Jets? No way. I'm no, not last, I'm not risking a zero. Last night. I'd ra- I would actually – I would rather start Denzel Mims over Perryman. Perryman. Last three weeks, Mims has seen at least seven targets, and he's scored ten fantasy points the last three weeks. I'd rather. I'm with like with this week the way it is. You, I feel like you need to go with consistency more than a boom or bust. Game. I agree with that. I agree with that statement. I'm just saying. Sure Perryman that also had eight targets think? last week. So, go on. Yep. <laughs> okay. I already spent too much time on the gents, so let's jump to the next game. Indianapolis Colts at the Houston Texans. Uh, Philip Rivers battling an ankle. Tell him injury, how much you like I, it, how you're going to start like him this, this matchup week. a lot. No, you definitely had him in your starting lineup I'm gonna in, start in our league. <laughs> I do have him in one, but uh, sounds like Lamar's going to play. But if Lamar so didn't play, play are you confident in Philip Rivers this week to play Texans as a streamer? Oh, yeah. Do you think – you think he can yeah. crack the top ten? Texas defense is horrible. I think he can get you twenty points, at least. Why not? Uh, yeah, the run game really holding it back because the Texans season. aren't that great on the run either. So I, don't great. don't be surprised if Naeem Hines rips off a big run or Jonathan Taylor like rips off a big run. I mean, and if that's the case, I mean, the Colts are a team that's shown this year mm-hmm. that if they get up, they're going to just run the ball. They're not I think it's going to be a shootout. I mean, it's a good chance. Deshaun Watson is hot. Yes, he is. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah he's True. just missing his top pass catcher, which we'll, we'll get to that a little later. Yeah. But uh, Rivers has been seeing the volume of plant. You're the volume guy. He hasn't had less than 33 attempts since week four. It's kind of like a Joe Burrow situation where they just kind of it's chuck It's because it. their defense Frank has been Wright more of shootout games lately. Bit. Like last week, they played the Tennessee Titans. How much does the Titans score? 40-something points. you got to throw it. I mean, the Colts played the week before, the Packers. Mm. Packers, they had 28 points. The Packers. <laughs> the Packers. They played like the Packers in the second the half, let me tell you. <laughs> but they scored 28 points in the first half on them, and the Colts were forced to pass to get back mm-hmm. in the game. So it's it's been – their game script depended in my eyes. Sure. Okay. Okay. Then uh, the running backs that you brought up a little bit, Jonathan Taylor is back this week. He did not have COVID. He was just close contact last week. 
So he is cleared, good to go. And obviously, Naheem, Naheem. Hines, who would you rather start here in this backfield this week? Why is that, Ike? You were kind of an two advocate weeks ago when they played the Packers. for Jonathan Taylor. Same reason why I was an advocate for Montgomery. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would rather play Jonathan Taylor, but I'm more confident that Naheem Hines is going to get the, the – the more yeah, consistent right. <laughs> floor. Because Jonathan Taylor has the ability to rip off a, a 40, 50 yard touchdown run. And then they're going to be using him majority of the time. But I'm more confident in Naheem Hines if you're looking for that safe, dependent play. Uh, did you guys hear that? Uh, I mean, sure. obviously, you heard about Will Fuller being out the rest of the year with the PDs or whatever that he took un- unknowingly. Bradley Roby also tested positive. For PEDs and is yeah, out for the remaining. Same yeah, same team. And uh, we already know that they're cornerbacks after Bradley Roby. I can't name a single one. <laughs> so I'm loving these wide receivers this week. Yeah. I just don't know which one. Do you think? Do you think um, they were each injecting <laughs> PEDs into each other's butts? <laughs> right from or different. Do you think they were I, I hope different for guys. the sterilization part of it, it was different guys. <laughs> but I mean, who do you like out of this? I mean, T.Y. Right, Hilton showed up last week finally, um, I, but then you have the emergence of Michael Pittman. I'm gonna go I a like, weird one. Say Zach Pascal like or Trey Burton. I, was a... <laughs> I thought I was weird for thinking you Hilton. <laughs> But uh, Pittman, I, I I advocated for Pittman last week and unfortunately disappointed. He saw nine targets, but only catching two of them. So that's uh, not good. But uh, the volume's there. I think he is the most talented pass catcher in this offense. Yeah, I think he's probably the safest so I, floor. Uh, I think your boomer right, bust guy is probably T.Y. Hilton because you know T.Y. can take it to the house if he gets a good throw or an open lane. You don't think so? There. No, he can't. Not anymore. All right. <laughs> no, there are no more boom with you. I ain't going to fight you on that. that... Hmm. <laughs> yeah. In this but matchup, which, uh, yeah. I like him. Buying into he's Burton been pretty now. solid as of late. I think he's got a good chance to get that, that good 10 points from a tight end to make him viable. Sure. Good. Sure, and this good. is a good matchup against Texas, Ex- the Texas defense. Um, jumping over to the Texans, Deshaun Watson, been killing it. How worried are you guys with him moving forward without Will Fuller? Because his, when Fuller's not on the field, he I, does yeah. tend to struggle. He's not going to be as hot as he, he's been, but he's, he's playing well. He's going to find ways to score and find Brandon Cooks open, Kiki Kunte. Sure, going to dump it off to David Johnson because he's finally back in the lineup. <sighs> I I just temper your expectations without Will Fuller because you're right. Will mm-hmm. Fuller is where um, he gets majority of his yards from. You're still starting him. But yes, you're still starting him because of his rushing value. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Just so everyone, just so Watson owners know, moving forward, he's got Indy this Ooh. week, then the Bears next week, and then Indy again. So it's kind of a tough stretch of games for him. Um, LaPlante, you already Con- brought up. David I believe it was Johnson, concussion, wasn't it? Back from injury. Yes, I believe so as well. How do you fit? Is you shoot right back? Oh, ah, man, I want to chase what Derrick Henry what did thinking? last week against this defense, but J- David Johnson is, is not Derrick Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and I. I think, Hell to the no. I think no. he's going to get the volume of a running no, back no, two. No. I don't know if he's going to reach a running back two value, though. If he does, it's going to be in the passing game. Because he's – go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, he's That's a fair. well-known no, no, pass-catching back. You, guys, you know go he's going to – if, no, if they're down and Deshaun Watson can't find Brandon Cooks because Will Fuller's <laughs> out, I mean, he's going to just check it down. Mm-hmm. Are you guys super high on Brandon Cooks now, or do you feel like he's more? I'm like, does he thrive? Super when high somebody on him. Else has yeah, I think he's actually going to be pretty good is this being week. Covered. You are. Huh? <laughs> okay, riddle me this. Why? <laughs> Who else is he going to throw to? 
Kiki Kunte. <laughs> yeah, no. It's for one, it's not Kiki Kunte. It's Kiki, Kiki Kuti. Kiki. <laughs> you know it's what? Cutie. I can't put a, a damn you know mark on it to make it. You know, have that little <laughs> give us a little warning first. He's gonna throw it to his boy David Fells. Come on, man. You're funny. Yeah, come on. <laughs> No, nah, David Fells is irrelevant now. It's Jordan Atkins. But he had one go right through his hands Whoa, on Thanksgiving. No. That was an easy touchdown. Yeah, you can't idiot. be doing that on Thanksgiving. Come on. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I guess. The play you have to take the rest of these games or no? Well, uh, take this next game and I'll go I mean, I'm that. rolling here. I can keep rolling. All right. Los Angeles Rams at the Arizona Cardinals. Jared Goff. Guys, he's been uh, <laughs> up and down. I How do you feel about him like in this him. But I don't like him in a – no, I, I like him in, in an NFL like matchup in this game stardom, because no. I think he's going to do everything <laughs> right to beat the Arizona Cardinals, but he's not going to be throwing for a lot of yards, unfortunately, I don't think. Uh, I think if you're in a 12 team league, I'm sure you, you can probably start him. But in 10 team league, I think you can find someone different. Yeah, I mean, I would probably lean even Philip Rivers over. He Jared will get Goff you 20 points. Game. I feel like. And then in the backfield, no, nope. finally, happened. I wouldn't trust it just. Does yet. Sean McVay trust Cam Akers now? Yeah, you should have rephrased that question. It finally Nine happened. Carries, 84 yards <laughs> Wait, a Sean McVay didn't trust him. He just, Cam Akers just went out and balled. Finally, he hit the end zone for the first time this year. He was yeah, long yeah. overdue. I just unfortunately yeah, you can't start anybody too. for the running backs because you didn't Darryl don't Henderson. know who's really gonna do what. <sighs> Especially I, Akers now in the mix. Der- last two games. Agreed. Daryl Henderson's last two games. That's good. That's pretty good right there. Per carry and one point nine yards per carry. So he's uh I get he's more rolling. Going, going <laughs> he's <forward>. rolling. <laughs> so uh appa- apparently Cam Akers can't pass block. So that's why he ha- that's why McVay doesn't trust him. Yeah, let's just move on from the, from the running here, backs in but... this one and let's just go on to the pass catchers because I think Robert Woods might have a tough time this week. Well, well, no. He's, oh, he, well, I was gonna say that they're Patrick Peterson starts, treatment. Him and Cooper Cup. But why is Robert Woods gonna struggle? But, I mean, he's still relevant. He's still been shutting down some receivers this year. I mean, I just Robert Woods is the number one guy at least listed on the depth chart. He's probably gonna shadow him, and Cooper Cup's probably gonna receive a little bit more value. This could that. be more of a Josh Reynolds type I was, of game over Robert yep, Woods. I could see that as well. But Cooper Cup's going to eat. I already know that. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, we talked last week. We like Gerald Everett. Yes, with Tyler he is Higby's going to be out, playing this but week. But it sounds like Higby should be there I don't this week, like correct? either of them. So don't start either of them. No, no, no. And coming off Jumping a wonderful, Cardinals, wonderful though, game. Boy, Kyler Murray, yes, I'm a little worried. <laughs> This Rams it? defense is top five. Uh, <laughs> they've they've hit a very hot streak right now of uh, playing really well together. And you're obviously starting Kyler Murray, but you're definitely tempering your expectations. I just don't see a lot of yards coming out of this game. This is probably going to be one of those grinded out games. He almost made this the Sid article, man, because this Rams defense is he's not Aaron Donald is no joke. Doing man. great against fantasy quarterbacks this year. It's insane, but. It's Kyler Murray, and you have to you have to hope for some rushing touchdowns. Yeah, or I, th- I I think he's. You go ahead. I was gonna, just going to say I think he's going to get more rushing touchdowns than passing touchdowns about, this week, if ahead. anything. Agreed. But the thing that worries me is since he hurt his shoulder, guys, a couple weeks ago, he's only had five rushing attempts each of the last two games. Like he stopped running it, and before that, the four games before that, he had ten, fourteen, I think that, eleven, and eleven. 
it, it, it's it's worrisome, but I think five. it's also attributed to the that's game a, script because they finally got Kenyon Drake back healthy. They wanted to get him involved and running efficiently in this offense. Like, look what he did last week, getting two touchdowns. I think he had over 100 yards. I mean, <sighs> because the weird thing about Kyler Murray's uh, injury is it happened on a sack. It didn't happen on him, you know, busting out a 15, 10-yard run and not sliding or anything. He, he was doing stupid. It. It's it's kind of an anomaly though that he's only rushed it for five times, because that is his weapons, is his legs as much as his arms. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And then so the running back, Kenyon. Kenyon Drake, Chase Edmonds. Who you guys like better? He's finally starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, Sixteen. He missed fans, how many points, games? Twenty-four fantasy points his last two games. 22 carries last week. Only one, huh? He missed. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, I was going to say, because he's still weeks. up there. He's plus up there on the rushing leaders five. list. So I was like, well, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, Chase Edmund gets the PPR work, mm-hmm. but it's just not a whole lot of volume because he's not getting any rushing attempts. Sure. That's going to be a fun matchup, though, against uh, Jalen Ramsey. Obviously, you're starting him, but he's... uh, Temper your expectations, for sure. Since Kyler's... Yeah. And since Kyler's been struggling a little bit the last two games, Hopkins has, too. Hmm. Since his uh, Hail Mary catch that I love so fucking much. He's only had 51 and 55 yards. Yeah, it's two Kyler games. Murray. He's, he hasn't been throwing it so well. He's, he's been uh, very inaccurate yeah. the past couple of games, and it's probably attributed to that shoulder injury. Hopkins is really the only pass catcher I want. Christian Kirk, I'm over him. <laughs> he's uh, he hasn't produced the last. Uh, I think it's just down weeks. Uh, I mean, he's been, he's had some he had. bad matchups. I mean. The matchups don't get any easier, my dude. The well, the, the nice Rams, thing about the Giants, Giants though, is he's not going to get he's not going to get the Bradbury the treatment. That's going to be Hopkins. So Kirk could a have a, a good week schedule. next week, but I won't argue with the other matchups. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're not starting any other. All right, you're not starting Kirk Laplan, are you? Or are you comfortable? I would be comfortable putting flex. him in the flat. I don't know if you saw. You're I not confident. Leagues today, like. He's gonna get you the big play. He's j- he is involved in this offense. It's it's plain and simple because it's not Andy Isabella and Larry Fitzgerald's out with COVID right now. Uh, Chase Edmonds is playing in the slot and they're still throwing it. They're at least trying to get Christian Kirk involved. It's just not they're not connecting. Yep, and then there's the I, I just, it's weird. Yeah. I think it has to do with Kyler Murray's throwing. It's, they've kind of gone a little bit more run heavy too the past couple of weeks because of the injury. Yes, yeah. skip over Max Williams because nobody well, wants him. Go ahead, roll us through these next games. <laughs> the plan. All right. <laughs> I mean, his family wants him, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Our, our, our next game here is the uh, New York Giants at the Seattle Seahawks. This one's going to be a shit show. Uh, Daniel, yeah. J- Daniel Jones is uh, ruled out. Colt McCoy is going to be dueling it against uh, MVP start. candidate Russell Wilson. Do not start. Hey. Yeah, do <laughs> Gives me nightmares well, that, and mad. That's Ike's boy, Colt McCoy. <laughs> Just chuck but yeah, uh, <laughs> I know, I know. Seattle in the beginning of the year forget. was a great matchup, but the, their defense is coming together a little bit more. And obviously, Colt McCoy's—he's <laughs> not even a shell of what a shell was of himself. So you're spending too much time on him already. I know. So, well, with Colt McCoy starting, are you starting Got Wayne Bowman this week? <laughs> you trust it borderline again? flex. Yeah. Yeah, Seattle's rush defense is. Yeah, running tough, backs are pretty rough but, uh, this year, like I've said earlier. You probably so have to. Start. You need a guy you with consistency, and he's one of them. He's he has been yeah, consistent. He uh, had uh, I wanted to say it was like four of the last five games, yeah, a touchdown in each game. Uh, Show. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's nice, but just temper your expectations. Yeah, because CL's run defense isn't isn't easy. But uh, with Colt McCoy starting, do we have any interest in any of these pass catchers in Darius Lane, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate? Even I'll Evan say Ingram? it every week like I usually do, only Sterling Shepard. Yeah, yeah, I don't really yep. like any of them with McCoy starting. Shepard's just super consistent. Consistency is key for this so week. I, yeah, I, I agree with I, He's one of the more I consistent suppose. guys lately, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, he's only had one week it's, under 10 fantasy points all season. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Seemed, it seemed like Evan Ingram sure and Sterling Shepard were the two targets of Colt McCoy last week. Evan Ingram sure. had nine targets. Sterling had eight. After that, it was only three, two, and one by Darius Slade and Deion Lewis. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah. So Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram. I mean, and that's even risky it's in itself. With Colt McCoy starting. So we'll move on to the Seahawks. You're starting Russell Wilson. I don't care if the Giants Never defense. Your expectations. They 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 have the defense for the Giants are pretty good, but I don't think Brad Berry is going to be able to stop DK Metcalf. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, DK Metcalf is uh, not of this earth. Yep. Just sometimes. Yes, but his feet allow him to always be in the position to catch the ball, (laughs) no matter where that ball is. (laughs) Yes, he does. That was a couple of weeks ago where he took right he in the beat. Uh, Russ, man. Or was that two weeks I, ago? Talking about yeah. injuries, yeah, I mean, this fucking backfield is right pretty banged up. Well, you got yeah. Chris yeah. Carson questionable with his foot. Uh, then you got his backup, Carlos Hyde, questionable with the toe. Um, My toe. If, Start him. If, if, what other, whatever one's starting – you're definitely starting up. Yes, now. sir. The running back. We so do you like uh, the Travis Homer then if neither of these guys start? Yep. Actually, Travis Homer is doubtful, mm-hmm. and he if will he's probably not DJ be Dallas playing. Now, sure. All right. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he's been bagged up all year. I'd like to at like some point see Rashad won, Penny. Uh, GM league but... today. He always on the injury report. He is coming back that? here pretty soon. He, they said he could be activated within yeah, the next that, couple weeks or so. A little so scary that can for make, defenses, uh, the backfield kind of kind of hate. Kinda uh, hate obviously, him. we talked about Metcalf. You're starting him. Uh, are you guys yeah. comfortable with Tyler Lockett? I mean, he's been kind of you have uh, to start him, but man, the, he's, yeah, he's been he's been struggling oh lately. God. He hasn't. I mean, yeah, he has. He is not the number yeah, one in that definitely offense. Definitely been struggling. <laughs> like Dylan said a couple weeks ago. Pretty sure it was last week. Most yeah. of the time he's not. <laughs> last week he sometimes only got four he is, targets. I mean, the week before that he got nine. So <laughs> it's just it's way too inconsistent. Uh, but you got to start him. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, you got to start him. Uh, one guy that you could you could choose on starting. Or he's probably going to set your bench, but he just managed to find touchdowns, even though he had negative receiving yards last week. Keep David, Mo- bench. David Moore. Uh, don't do don't. it. All right. Not this week. Not this week. We'll save him for don't better matchups. And then uh, no. the tight end. I mean, ever since Greg Olson's went down, I mean, I know there's a spot to fill, but I don't think Jacob Hollister is a viable candidate. No. Uh, well, Daisley is. Disley is better anyways, but tough matchup too. Giants are he's getting the targets, well, D- yeah. Disley's playing more snaps. Um Hollister's just getting more targets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But New yeah, York's I, I think it's safe to say the only ones we're really so confident in this week are the running back, Matt Calf, and Wilson. Hmm. <laughs> so we'll move on to the Philadelphia Eagles at the Green Bay Packers. Yep. Carson Wentz. Straight him. I don't, don't know who, trust him. I don't know who's starting him by now. Yeah. Uh, but because of his struggles, Miles Sanders, he's starting to struggle himself because this offense just can't get it together. Are we confident that Sanders can get it going against this uh, good matchup in the Packers? 
Jonathan Taylor was able to do some stuff against the Packers. Dave Montgomery yeah. was able to do some we stuff just against the Packers. Good time for Sanders to do some shit. Yeah, if yeah, if he can't Dave get it done Montgomery this week, I would be yeah, start definitely. worrying. Yeah, you you're definitely worried coming into the fantasy playoffs. More so for the team. Philadelphia Eagles because this is supposed to be their franchise running back for a couple of years, and if he can't do what he's supposed to do against Green Bay, it's just that they might have to look elsewhere. And yeah. Please don't start any of these guys. Travis Fulgram came out hot in the beginning of the season, but he's definitely right simmered down because of the he showed why he why he wasn't looked upon early. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, why why he ain't fuck. shit? He's just like fucking guy. Yeah, I don't like this matchup. I don't like these pass catchers. I wouldn't be starting anyone. But maybe Zach Ertz or Dallas Goddard with Zach Ertz coming Not off IR. Goddard. You don't like Goddard with Packers records? pretty good against tight ends this year. Like, like yeah. surprisingly very good. Yes, they are. So, yeah, I've got a huge, huge... Yeah. I'm not a huge component for either of the guys this week. With Zach Ertz coming right. back from injury, you might see some rust. So Yeah. Not not a huge fan. Yeah, you had to choose between Goddard's the two. Been real solid, but it... I mean, he's been... Uh, Goddard's usually okay. What, uh, I'd take Ertz over Goddard. Uh, Goddard, I, I guess. To be honest, I don't want either of them, so I'm going to pass. Get out of Some people might have that option. But, yeah, go on, Dill. What's crazy... What's crazy is, is Goddard's played at least 83% of the snaps since he came back from... Uh, being banged yeah. up as well. That's obviously going to go I, down with I I'd, I'd have to lean more Goddard, too, but I'd, I also have to so agree that's... with Ike that I'm not starting either of these guys in this matchup. So we'll move on to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you're starting him. He's on a tear this year. Uh, 30 lead. Give himself an MVP. Leads the league in touchdowns with 33. Uh, he's got he's leading the league in uh, QBR, not QBR, uh, passer rating. I mean, he's on fire. Started him up. Uh, Aaron Jones, you starting him? him up. Yeah. I mean, this Eagles run defense is, is good, guys. I mean, their pass defense is not uh, any good, but their run Aaron defense. Aaron Jones is a beast, man. Yeah, I mean, running back to – yeah, attempt. Yes, he is. Yep, thank running you. Running back to – You took the temper, words out of my mouth. Temper, temper your, your, expectations. your expectations. That's all I want to say. I agree with you, uh, LaPlante, that it's tough. Because of that, Jamal Williams, I'd be sitting him it's, this week. I know yeah, he's pretty – he's good in good Andrew matchups Andrew with the Packers because they score a lot, but I don't see him doing well in this matchup. Uh, one guy you're starting, though, is Devontae Adams. I don't even think we need to talk about him. Alan Lazard, though. I mean, he finally came back from this uh, core injury. No. He, was, he was doing good with Aaron Rodgers before this injury. I mean – He's maybe shaking the rust off a little bit. Are you guys trusting him at all? Or do you not think that he can do, repeat what he did earlier in the season? This is not the week to be experimenting with Alan Lazard. Is, does he not have an injury designation? <laughs> uh, Come on, man. Why you got to say shit like that? Last week or no. No. <laughs> he does deserve recognition, but no, it is not carrying injury in designation, so he is he going to be playing. I, and the reason I say it, Ike, is because the wide receiver two in the Packers offense <laughs> is valuable. It's just a matter of just de- it's just a matter of deciphering who is going to be the wide receiver two because sometimes you get wa- yeah, Robert Tanyan as the wide receiver two, even I though like he's the Tanyan tight end more than Lazard and MVS. I mean, I I like him too. I just I feel like. The Packers are trying to get – they're going to try and get a wide receiver not named Devontae Adams involved in this offense if they plan on making a playoff push. All right. that, that, well, that, it would be the smart thing to do, but that's just a Packer fan talk. So uh, we'll move on to Tanyan because obviously Marquez Valdez-Scantling is the most boomer bust receiver in the NFL at this point. Can't trust him this week. No. Uh, but Tanyan, like you said, I mean, I, I'm starting him off this week. I like him in this matchup. Oh, yeah. He has shut me up for most of this year. Uh, Aaron Rodgers looks to him in the red zone. I mean, yeah, he I, does. you got anything to add on that, Dylan? All right, so we'll move on to our next game. 
New England Patriots at the Los Angeles Chargers. Yep. Clam Newton. Are we starting him this week? No. Even with the high rushing floor? Droppable. I don't want him. I'm Fair enough. Him. I will not argue with that. But because Even of what I always say about rushing quarterbacks taking away from their running backs value, are we concerned about starting Damian Harris or James White in this matchup? I'm a Damian Harris guy, but I can't ever be comfortable starting him just because of all the running backs there, obviously. I would throw him in the flex. Hey, you guys have been sure. on James White the last couple of weeks, and that's good on you too. Yeah, I mean, because... granted, he's he's got his role yeah, back since Rex Burkett went down. Yeah, he, pretty well. he's locked out with the he's touchdowns, though. 14 he got two of them last week. He can always fight touchdowns. I don't know yes, what it is. is. That was with Tom Brady, now with Cam Newton. It looks like so, it's not changing. <laughs> I hey I I wish he he would do as well, mm-hmm. but I I just don't see Damian Harris going away. He's gonna get majority of the carries. I just think James White's gonna be getting the higher priority. This game could carries. get away from him too, so it yes. could be a lot of James White. Yeah, I could agree. I agree with you on that. This could turn into a little bit of a shootout if the Chargers and Herbert come out and they're gonna have to throw the ball. And James White could get an easy five receptions this game. Yeah. Uh, because they might have to throw the ball, though. Do we like Jacoby Myers? No, I'm scared. No, I don't like him. I'm not even going to lie. That sounded like a barf noise in my mouth, and I'm going to just assume it was, even though I know it was burp. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I agree. These pass catchers are not great. Uh, Nikhil Harry out. Demir Bird, he's boomer bust, too, out. And then Ryan Izzo, the tight end. Yeah. I don't even know why he's playing. <laughs> so we'll move on to Justin Herbert. <laughs> we'll move on to Justin Herbert. Like we said, it's shootout potential. You guys think he can be a uh, top five quarterback this week or we more just top 10? Top 10 to 15. For some reason, now that Eckler came back, he like just yeah. stopped throwing the deep ball and was like, hey, let's just – Feed Eckler every target imaginable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push back on the shootout thing a little bit. I think Belichick's. I, I brought this up a little bit ago. They're trying to take it away, take the ball out of Cam's hands. So I feel like no, they're I, just gonna try I, and run it and control the game to keep Herbert I agree off. With that. I mean, that's Bill Belichick. So that's do, a smart play to go. But to if you can't stop Justin Herbert, you can't just run the ball if you're down. Yes, that's true. So it they might, but I because I do have to agree to with Ike though. With Eckler coming see. back, uh, that's just my thought. The offense changed. He was not throwing deep, and that kind of cuts down, you know, Mike Williams' value, Jalen Guyton. If anybody's struggling and playing him, <laughs> uh, somebody might be. If somebody is playing him. I am so sorry for whatever Nobody's happened playing to him. you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, Keenan Allen, he's getting double digit targets almost every week. He's just, he's, he's startable every fucking week. Hunter Henry, he was startable. Yeah, yeah he, he was, he, yep. fi- he finally seen double digit targets for the first time last week. He's rolling, man. But, Hunter. Like we said about Eckler, he led the team with 16 targets. Hunter. I don't know if it was an anomaly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but even that's not definitely not an anomaly. That's his game, man. Even when he was uh, heavily that's involved in week that's three, when he got eleven targets, Keenan Allen still got nineteen. It was a it was a weird game. It was a weird game. I, I, so I, he's can't. Allen I trust Justin Herbert will go back else. to his ability to throw deep. But it's God, same. I wish I drafted Keenan Allen in the fifth round or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Fuck. That's shit. That's shit. Yep. I mean, I know the Tyrod Taylor stuff. I was so down on him because Tyrod. If, if, if Tyrod Taylor was still going, was down, no chance Keenan Allen would be we doing this good. But you, that's because 
all fantasy analysts were down on Keenan Allen, but at some point you have he to throw some respect beast. on his name, though, because Keenan Allen's been a fantasy stud when he's but been on the in all, in all honesty, though, five years, the news was so Tyrod Taylor was going to start for, all doing that. for the time being until probably they they actually were probably going to start him the whole year. The whole year, yeah. Yeah, and that was the whole reason why Keenan was losing value is just because Tyrod Taylor does not throw the ball. I mean, I get it, but I know it's a different scenario, but everyone was in love Yeah, but in all honesty, Allen Robinson was the only person on that offense was, who's throwing that him they the could throw the ball, ball to at the time. Darnell Mooney has now emerged. At... I was higher on Eckler over Allen uh, yeah, this year. Yeah, I agree. So. I, just, I just think it's uh, – it's, Oh yeah! Everyone should, yep, I, everyone should just own it. But uh, hey, if you did a no wide receiver strategy and, and he's your first one after getting a bunch of running backs, you just murdered. Oh. <laughs> that is the zero R the zero RB guys. Yeah, this right. Year are probably just loving it up because all the great running backs besides like Henry, and yeah. Melvin <laughs> Cook, and Kamara. But uh, I mean, we pretty much all, all said it in that now. So you're starting like, Herbert, you're starting so. Eckler, you're starting Allen, <laughs> you're starting Henry. Uh, uh, yeah, and if if you're feeling frisky, go ahead and throw Mike Williams in the flex. That's it. But uh, Sunday night football is upon us with the Denver Broncos at the Kansas City Chiefs. Drew Locke's finally off COVID. Uh, probably going to be a shootout. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. Do we like Drew Locke in a no, shootout? This, this defense is going to. Do we like? Up. Do we like garbage time Drew Locke in a shootout? He, Not yeah, in this he big might week. get some. He might get some garbage time points, but you can't. Trust your lock starting in your lock. Sure, I'm yeah. okay starting. How are you no about this? Because of, of the garbage week. time. How are you stuff? about starting uh, either running back though? Game, Melvin Gordon sense. and Philip Lindsay. He's questionable with the knee, so he could not play, which uh, would give Royce Freeman a bigger role where he was actually the pass catch. He got some pass catching involvement. So I mean, who would you like at like running back situation? If one of them is out, I like the one that's playing. Yeah, Gordon and the But if they're both fine. in, I, you can't, I don't want to start either of them. Like, if Lindsey's out, I'm cool starting Gordon. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I was, I mean, you guys, took the, you guys took the words out of my mouth. I mean, I, I'm not really confident about it. Uh, <laughs> Left your speech. Yeah, j just a little bit. Uh, like you said, though, you like the pass tell. catchers in this uh, – Shootout. You like Jerry Judy? You could start him. You like Tim Patrick? You start him. <laughs> Are you confident in KJ Hamler though? Yeah. Why not? He's been consistent. The last, I mean, you got to throw out last week, but he's been consistent. The the few games before that, ten fans. Yeah, points, I mean, 15, uh, nine, and then seven and a half. I so. Yeah. I th I think he merits flex material in this in this matchup. That's okay, but you uh, could do worse. I move on to Noah Fant, and you're starting him. Yes, you could, uh, you, could you could do yep, worse. Fire him up. It's like just hope Chiefs he, just hoping. Surprisingly bad against tight ends this year. Yeah, just hoping Prey stays healthy and stays on the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to the Chiefs. Uh, MVP favorite as of right now, Patrick Mahomes. Don't ever take him out of your lineup. Beast uh, ever. He should be the MVP. He he probably will win it. The guy's the guy's only thrown two interceptions all year. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is sick. Do not know if he's gonna play Sunday. He's questionable, so you guys are gonna have to probably gonna be a game that. time decision. Yeah, you're gonna have to pay close attention to that. If he is out though, do we like Le'Veon Bell yeah. finally? Le'Veon Bell will finally get to show what he's made of finally in the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. But if Clyde Edwards is uh, playing, let's say he does, you know, play, but you know he's still hampered by this illness. You guys think that they may temper his workload? Oh yeah, big time. I would be scared. To start with I mean, they're split. They're split when they're both healthy, but I mean, if one's not workload, healthy, you just think they're lean the other tempered, the other right? way. <laughs> they're gonna be passing a lot like they always do. So, yeah. all right. Well, uh, it's so hard. We'll move on to Tyreek Hill then, who had yeah. a monster game last yeah. week. Uh, 
uh, looked like he was going to break a record uh, <laughs> or fucking flip, a- flip Anderson, man. But he didn't get to 300 yards. Such a shame. But you're starting him every week. Him and Mahomes are just too good to be true. But uh, Sammy Watkins, he's, he's finally healthy. Do we trust him? Not this week. <laughs> I, 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 saw I like that answer. Week. You can't really uh, trust we him. can't trust Miko Hardman. Uh, <laughs> you, you always know he can have he's, – he's a one-play guy. So, same with DeMar- – one's faster. <laughs> But yeah, they yeah. like us Robinson. They like the same. They're the same big player. boomer busts. I mean, if like I said, if yeah. if you're feeling well, frisky, same throw them in there. Player, but man. it's big, it's big unreasonable guys. to think that they're gonna get you consistent points. So we'll move on to our Monday night doubleheader, the Washington football. Feeling frisky. Uh, we have the Buffalo why? Can Bills I ask why it's a at San Francisco 49ers, and then we have the Washington football so team. you're not just going to answer this question. You just... There's two teams playing. There's two – two. I mean, four teams. Four teams. Oh. I, well, no, there's four teams. <laughs> well, um, why? 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 I believe it was the too. Pittsburgh they, they game that they do flex, flex to this position. Why? I don't care. Let's just keep why? going. <laughs> yeah, we got a party pooper over here. I mean, I am sorry for okay. that party. <laughs> party, you pooper. should be. <laughs> we should make you talk about Alex Smith for doing that. Are you starting? It's gonna be the easiest talk <laughs> have this whole podcast. You should definitely not start him because the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is gonna eat him alive, along with Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I'd be I'd be benching Antonio Gibson this week just because the Steelers run defense is tough. But I like JD McKissick. This this game script bodes well for him. Uh, they're gonna be they're gonna be down. I wouldn't be surprised if this is another twelve target game. Unfortunately, for- the Steelers yes, defense allows the least amount of catches to running back, so it's not gonna be too pretty for McKissick either. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I <laughs> no, was just no, gonna no, say no, the the no, stats no, could be a little skewed on the Steelers to, for their pass catching on the running backs because it's the wide receivers <laughs> that have been catching majority of the balls on the Steelers. Like their run defense is really good, but their pass defense has allowed points. So I mean, with with McKissick playing so much passing, uh, running so many routes, I can I can mm-hmm. see it. But uh, like I just said about that about the Steelers' defense not being great against the pass, do we like Terry McLaurin? Enough. Start. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious what that enough meant. <laughs> Enough to party. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you talk about Chris Sims, but you're yeah, not playing him. Yeah, uh, we you talk about Terry, Peyton Barber, playing. but you're not. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, guys. Chris I had a brain Sims, fart man. there. That's Steve the Sims. My bad. Asshole. But we're not going to talk about him anymore. We already spent too much time as it is. Who's eBay? <laughs> <laughs> so. We'll move on to the only undefeated no. team left, uh, Big Ben. <laughs> I mean, he's been he's been doing really good lately. Uh, he's actually had, I believe, 250 yards the past two games. But this Washington football team's defense, do we trust that he can get the yards against it? Oh, sure. Yeah, Big Ben. Who? Yeah. Big Ben? Actually, yeah, he's an animal. Is Chase Are you Young playing? Sure, he is playing. He's an animal. He, he played yeah, last no, week. That's he why got I a asked, sack against the Giants. Did not play last week, right? Well, he we blew that. So <laughs> <laughs> you guys just can't trust me, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> no, obviously not. Yeah. I'd just say temper expectations a little bit because <laughs> this football team, they like to the blitz. They, they, the expectations shall be tempered. But with that de- tough defensive line, uh, 
James Conner. I mean, he's been banged up, but he's expected to play this game. Do we like him? <laughs> Not at all. Uh, how about Benny Snell? Yeah, start him, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you no. have to start him, but I don't like him at all in this matchup. Uh, do you like Benny Snell at all with no. this? With this, if Connor's around. I don't know. I. The thing scares me for Connor too is him being sure. obviously a cancer yeah. survivor and then him getting. COVID. I was thinking more of the he thought of. I mean, the team's undefeated. That, they're looking like they're already I mean, in the playoffs. They might be looking to arrest him, kind of like the Alvin Kamara. You sick bastard. <laughs> he might be getting the Alvin Kamara treatment. That's why I, I'm curious about Benny Snow. But, I mean, you're starting Connor either way. Juju, though, he's finally emerged as uh, at least a 1B to Deontay Johnson's 1A. You're starting him this week along with Deontay Johnson, I'm guessing? Start him all. You're starting James Washington, too? He's talking air key, bro. He's starting all four of those pass catchers. Well, then you yeah. got to say tight end because no, he's not he's a pass catcher. No, not he's a pass catcher. catcher like talking not a hunt. He catches, yep. he catches the pass. Not a hundred percent of the time, though. He, <laughs> tight ends block too. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Sex Panther. <laughs> I hate time. you guys so much. <laughs> We're gonna move on to our next game here. <laughs> the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers. Get yourself together. We got Josh Allen coming to the, coming to the bay. Do we like him in this matchup? Yeah, it's up for expectations. San Francisco's defense uh, starting to bounce back a little bit. They made uh, Jared Goff look <laughs> but, uh, a little bit I, last week. I agree. Josh Allen, uh, he's great quarterback, but this Niners defense, they actually got healthier. They got Richard Sherman back last week. The yeah. Shermanator. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you're starting him, but temper your expectations. Right uh, he's probably going to be a borderline QB1. Uh, I just don't see him being uh, high. Uh, I am uh, one. Tell me more. How about I tell you more uh, about Devin Singletary? He finally got more carries than Zach Moss when Zach Moss was actually healthy for a game. Do we trust that Singletary will get the majority of the carries down the stretch? Absolutely, yes. I am trying Absolutely to not. <laughs> no, I don't like either of them, to be honest. You trying to tussle right yeah. now? Go ahead. <laughs> and he looked good. Like, He's just not getting yeah, the red zone carries. Either. That's the only See, problem with him. Singletary right, was efficient last week. 11 carries, 82 yards. Also caught all three of his. Yeah. Uh, and if, yeah. if he don't Zach get it, maybe Josh Allen scrambles, scrambles in. So, yeah. That's what he was drafted to do. So. You know, so. With Richard Sherman back, though, he's probably, I mean, I don't know if yes. he's still shadowing, but he does not. Okay, let's hope Stefan Diggs does not go to his side because we're starting him this week and we're hoping he does big things like he's done all year. Uh, With the news on Brown going to the IR, uh, Cole Beasley finally gets a chance for a bigger role in this offense. Mm -hmm. Uh, He didn't show it last week. Uh, He threw a pass touchdown but wasn't really involved in the passing game. Do we trust him for a bounce back week against the Niners possibly? This is the wrong week to be trusting him. And well, if you had to choose a second uh, pass catcher out of this uh, offense, because you're obviously not going with Dalton Knox or Tyler Croft, Zach, it's, is it's it Cole Beasley Austin or Gabriel Knox. Davis? It's you probably Beasley. He's definitely it. the safer guy, but with – Gabe Davis, you can't deny that he's produced with John Brown. Yeah, being yes, out. and if it, he kind of is, yeah, he's kind of the big play by Josh guy. Allen when Stefan Diggs is having a tough time. Uh, Cole Beasley's he's kind of that third down catching guy. I mean, he he did it in Dallas and he's doing it again in Buffalo. <laughs> Football catcher guy. <laughs> Third football. down football catcher guy. Football, Get it right. Uh, catcher guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he's he's really only going to get targets, I think, in critical here, situations. He's kind of like the him. Zach Moss of this pass catching back. Sure, sure, sure. But uh, that's all I'll say about them because, I mean, Stefan Diggs is really the only consistent mm-hmm. play that you want. And obviously it's not Dalton Knox or Tyler Croft. 
They're it's two Dawson times. Knox for the second time. <laughs> maybe if he was, maybe if he was better, I would remember his name. Move to the 49ers. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Jump to the 49ers. We got now. Nick Mullins. Pick up, pick it up, and let's roll. Maybe if you'd stop interrupting me tonight. and keep repeating what Dylan or I say. Let's get this on the move, and let's roll. <laughs> okay, weapon. Again with the interruptions. Nick Mullins, you're not playing him. <laughs> I don't care what the matchup says. You're not playing him. But Raheem Mostert back. He's finally healthy. You're playing him. No. Hey, you agree? Yeah, reluctantly. Yeah, I think he's a solid running back too this week. It's yes. Buffalo Bills side, defense. Running uh, side, running they're back. They're not that great against running backs. Yeah. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, because of this run-heavy offense, do we Struggling. see him possibly yeah. getting some Struggling work this week? A bit. Make him, you not know. To start. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, I would have to agree because you got a guy like Debo Don't Samuel like just taking so much volume yeah. in this offense. Yeah. Yeah. Ayuk's not going to have the same They're role. doing everything they He's can to get probably him the ball, not even started I, I, I wouldn't say Ayuk that because, back. I mean, look at the connection he had with Mullins. I mean, yes, they're getting Debo the, the ball because they were force-feeding because they who else were they going to give it to, Kendrick Bourne? Is there the Kendrick Bourne, Jordan Reed, or they got to hand it off or you give it to the talents of Debo Samuel? Brandon Ayuk has some talent. I will agree with you. He's not going to have the same role with Debo Samuel healthy. But don't count out the chemistry he built with Nick Mullins in the, his absence. Not the week to be trusting that. I mean, you're you're gonna have Tre'Davious White on Debo Samuel. I mean, Brandon I, Brandon Ayuk, Tre'Davious White is a traditional corner uh, shadow corner, so I mean he's gonna cover the number one guy. So Brandon Ayuk is could see more opportunities. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, Jordan Reed though. Are you guys starting him because his tight end landscape is poopy? Yeah, you can as a streamer. You're not super thrilled about it. Uh, Buffalo gives up, I believe, the Any second most I... fantasy points to tight ends. So that's that. why you'd want to do it. But like I said, you're not excited about it. Jordan Reed looked like he wanted to kill Nick Mullins a couple times last week. Just get Mullins struggled. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a solid backup for some reason, and that's not really normal because Mullins seems to he's okay. But that's know, enough about a backup quarterback. We're gonna move on to Tuesday yeah, night. Yeah, he's football. just missing to missing open throws last week. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys at the Baltimore Ravens. If you want to talk about backup quarterbacks, how about uh, McSorley last week? Coming in for the Ravens and, and, and slinging the ball. Wrong team. We're on Cowboys. <laughs> What'd you say, Ike? Wrong team. We're on Cowboys. I mm. We're on the game Hollywood. between the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Ravens. And I wanted to say it before we got to the Cowboys party pooper. So you're Stavi. Yes, I'm Stavi. And Andy Dalton, you're sitting him this week. The, Ra- the Ravens defense is tough, and they don't allow right. top quarterback finishes to anybody. Except Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Zeke, though, I mean, you're starting him. He, he got a little bit more involved in the offense last week. But, uh, yeah, you're, you're tempering expectations against the Baltimore Ravens' run defense. You've tempered expectations. Even with the running back the landscape with the already. injuries. You should have anyways. He's kind of a flex play at this point. I'd say he's a running back, too, with the volume he's going to get. He's borderline running back, too. In my, he's shown it. Since week six, so, Mikey, I wish I could. I wish I had something pulled up where I could go back to see where his running back finishes were. But week seven, six points. Week eight, eight it, points. It week is nine, brutal. It kind of reminds me of David Montgomery 11, 12, earlier this year. 19 points. The like, last week, he points. has a floor of nine brutal. points. Bad. Uh, it's it's true, though. I mean, because of his volume, he has a floor. I can't believe we just he's going to get you. To I mean, he's most likely going to get you nine points. He didn't get it last week against the Washington football team. But I'd say uh, with volume alone, he's warranted like at least a flex play, a low end running back too. 
Yeah, but running backs are hard. They're a tough landscape to navigate. Yeah. So I you, want you, more than you get what you get for my running back too. Amari yeah. Cooper. Uh, you starting him with Andy Dalton? Finally finding him. Ike, anything to add? No, you're starting him. Yeah. I don't see why you'd be taking him out of your lineup. Yes, you starting any starting him this this long? Might as well keep doing it. Are you starting any of these other pass catchers in CD Lamb or Michael nope. Gallup? I don't like it. Either. I don't like that. Dalton Schultz, maybe. CD Lamb will probably yep. get Marlon Humphrey. He's in the slot a lot. Yeah. So I don't like that. I yeah. mean, uh, yeah. If the so if the if it's a negative game script, which Cooper. I predict it will be. I mean, last week. Mari Cooper got eight targets. Michael Gallup got eight targets. CeeDee Lamb got seven targets. Dalton Schultz got five targets. Like, they're getting targets, but they're shit targets, guys. They're they're not good. You're a shit target. <laughs> it means I can't be hit. But we'll move on to Lamar Jackson uh, for the Baltimore Ravens. He, right now he's on the COVID list, but there's a chance he could be activated tomorrow uh, on Saturday. It's kind of hard to talk about. We know J.K. Yeah, Dobbins is playing. Because we don't know Dobbins who's playing. playing. That's for sure. Marquise Brown is playing. I mean, last week, you know what I, mean? I, don't, I don't think he'll do what he did last week, but he's always got the chance to do it. Okay. You're starting the usuals if they're playing. You're starting Mark Andrews, and you're starting Lamar if they're playing. You're not starting Des Dobbins Bryant. Flex worthy. You're not, well, no. What? And no, Devin DeVernay. That's it. Mark no. Andrews. We just said no, if you're he's not playing, playing, yes. Bryant, you goofy. He's playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and close it out, guys. So, <laughs> uh, as always, thanks for listening. You can check our work at uh, fantasysixpack.net. I do the oh, yeah. tight end streaming article every week, and the start sit. Uh, Ike actually filled in and did the start sit. For me this week, thank you, Ike. You did a fucking awesome job. Um, you can I do the injury impact article. At D Comes out Mondays, 22, 22. and you can find me at Twitter right, at Ike two one two one. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at be like underscore Mike with two eyes, and I write the weekly trend article. It comes out every Monday. Peace. Adios. All right, guys. Great podcast. As always, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. See you next week.